Hi, and welcome to our Patient Warming Podcast, where we will be joined by clinical specialists Helen and Danny from the Patient Warming Clinical Team. Today, we will be focusing on underbody blankets. Okay, both. Uh, I've got a list of questions here from our customers from Facebook and on Twitter, and I'm just going to ask you them one by one, and if you could answer them to help give our customers a bit more insight around 3M products and also the area of patient warming, then that would be great. Okay, let's get underway. So Danny, the first question I have for you is, is the underbody blanket placed under or over the linen on the operating table? The underbody blanket should be in direct contact with the patient. There shouldn't be anything between the underbody blanket and the patient for, it to, um, for the blanket to work most efficiently. So Helen, what types of patient positioning can I use with the full access underbody blanket model 635? You can use any position that you need to use for your surgery, be it lateral, prone or supine. Another commonly asked question we got, Danny, was can we use the underbody blankets to transfer the patient from their bed to the operating table? No, we shouldn't be using the bear hugger blanket to transfer patients. What we should be using is a transfer sheet which should be under your bear hugger blanket and you can use this to enable you to transfer the patient safely. So Helen, another commonly asked question we got on Facebook was why is there a circular perforation at the head of the 635 full access underbody blanket? That's so that you can get proper supporting uh, for your patient's head, particularly when they're prone, so that you've got good airway management as well as proper support for your patient. So Dania, a question from one of our Twitter followers was, why are there long seals and perforations down both sides of the 635 full access underbody blanket? These perforations along each side of the blanket allow you to, um, to, to separate them and it allows extra width on either side of the operating table if you've got a, a slightly bigger patient. It also enables you to um, safely um, secure the patient's arms with arm skids, and which still enables the channels on the outside not to be occluded, which allows optimum airflow around the blanket to keep it inflated. Also, if you wanted to pass your arm through and out, you can position the arms out on an arm table on both sides. Another question we got, Helen, was, can we place a chest support on the surface of the full access underbody blanket model 635? You can place any kind of support in there. Ideally, you, obviously you don't want to cover the whole of the blanket before you put your patient on it because then you're including the airflow. But if you need supports, be it a lumbar support or a chest support, you can put that in. Ideally, you want to try and put it under the bear hugger, but I know in all cases that's not the optimum place for you. But as long as you've still got a good flow around it, yes, you can. So another question that we got from one of our customers is actually from an experience itself. And the customer is using a support to position the patient's legs so the medial aspect are accessible for harvesting of the Sylvanius vein graft. The question that they have is, do we place the pad on top of the full access underbody blanket? If you could, you could you would position the support actually underneath uh, the blanket so that you're still getting that support, but you're still getting a good flow, airflow as well. So Danny, regarding patient height using the model 545, what is the maximum patient height that can be placed on the adult underbody blanket? As long as the um, patient's head is positioned on the non-inflated section at the top end of the blanket, allowing the blanket to inflate and allow the flow to go around the blanket, um, if you've got a taller patient, what you could do is allow the, 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 the feet um, just to be off the end of the blanket at the bottom, so there's no upper height for patients. Just on one of the other, the other paediatric one, they, they give a specific height. Okay. So Helen, another commonly asked question we have is, can I use an arm support with the model 545 adult underbody blanket? You can. Um, it's d actually designed for patients where their arms are down by the sides or above the head. Basically, you don't want to occlude the flow going round the blanket itself. So if you need proper supports in where you're going to be occluding the flow, then you're better off using a 635 blanket instead. So Danny, a question that we got on Facebook was, will excess fluids used during the procedure pool on the underbody blankets? The underbody blankets are designed with unique um, fluid outlets. So what happens then, it allows the fluid to be drained away from the patient and stopping the patient from um, cooling and any maceration of the patient's skin. That fluid may then still be underneath the uh, blanket, which you could place in cos or a draw sheet to collect that fluid and stop it from. Helen, are there any contraindications for the underbody range? There are two that you have to be aware of. If you've got 
an area of the patient that has no blood supply, that is, for instance, if you've cross-clamped the aorta or they have an embolus, then you don't want to actively warm that area of your patient. You can still use the, uh, a bear hugger to warm the rest of that patient, but while it's cross-clamped or while you have no supply, blood supply, you don't want to be warming that area. Also, if you have a patient that has a transdermal patch in place, you don't want to put the bear hugger in direct contact or directly over where that medication patch is because it would change the dosage that you're giving your patient. So, Danny, another commonly asked question we got was, will we need to change the way we drape the patient as a result of using the underbody blankets? No, by using the underbody blankets, you don't need to change the way you drape at all. Uh, what the um, underbody blankets give you is um, more access of your patient. So again, better exposure for surgical procedure. So it will not affect the way you drape your patients at all, no. Okay, so Helen, this question is from our Facebook page. And the customer is asking, can I place a pillow under the patient's head during the procedure? You can place a pillow under the patient's head, yes, without a problem. But place it underneath the bear hugger so that the airflow still gets around the patient and you're not occluding any airflow at all. Helen, are the underbody blankets made out of radiolucent material? Yes, they are. OK, Danny, this question is regarding height, and the customer is asking, what if a patient is too large for the blanket? We, we have a range of blankets. We have 23 blankets on our range, which enables us to provide you a blanket for all of your needs. We have both on-the-body and over-body blankets. Um, dependent on the sizes of your patient. Regarding weight, at what point does the patient become too heavy for the blanket, Helen? There is never a point when a patient is too heavy for our blankets. We have a range of blankets that would suit any size or any weight of patient that you need. Danny, are the bear hugger blankets latex free? Yes, the bear hugger blankets are latex free. Helen, regarding maintenance, how should the temperature management unit be cleaned? should be cleaned according to your trust policy or hospital policy, but it should be with uh, warm soapy water with a soft cloth or an alcohol-free detergent wipe. Helen, what is the temp in range light? The temperature in range light will come on when the machine is blowing one and a half degrees or so either side of the selected temperature that you've chosen. Danny, regarding the 775 temperature management unit, how many airflow settings does the model have? Yeah, there are four settings. There are 32, 38 and 43 degrees. There's also an ambient setting which will allow you to um, circulate ambient temperature um, air around your patient. Okay, so the next question that we have is when should the filter be changed on the 3M bear hugger temperature management unit? The filter should be changed every 500 hours of air blowing use or every 12 months. Okay Helen, uh, the next question we have is does the forced air warming disrupt the laminar airflow in the theatre? Laminar flow airflow is uh, of a very high power, is a powerful airflow whereas the bear hugger airflow is a lot less strong so laminar flow will always overcome any disruption of air by a bear hugger. Okay, so that brings us to the end of our podcast. Uh, thank you for listening, and a big thanks also to Danny and Helen for answering these questions for us. Uh, it's really valuable insight, and if it's been valuable to you, then please let us know, and if you have any further questions or queries uh, regarding patient warming, then please let us know, and we'll hopefully try and do another one of these. Thank you.